people have a natural fascination with the night sky. They have a natural fascination to try to understand the world in which we live, the world in the grandest sense, not just the Earth. And astronomy teaches us something about how the Earth fits in to the much larger scheme. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey is the largest and most ambitious survey of the sky to date. The survey uses a two and a half meter telescope in Apache Point, New Mexico, and it has two principal instruments. One is an imaging camera that can take image of a large chunk of sky at once, and a spectrograph which can measure the spectrum of the object. That allows us to determine their distances. And so this gives us a three-dimensional map of the universe. The idea behind the Sloan Digital Sky Survey is that it is a survey. So rather than focusing in on a single object at a time, like most people think of when they imagine astronomers at telescopes, in this case, we're taking in a very large field of view and building up a picture of the universe as a whole rather than just studying our particular little corner of it. Right now, we're sort of putting everything together for the night in terms of checking all the telescope subsystems to make sure they're working properly, looking at calibration data to make sure that looks correct for the night, and then as soon as that's uh, all finished, we'll be headed down to the telescope to open it up. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey has two goals. One is to digitize the part of the sky that we can see from the northern hemisphere, about 10,000 square degrees, and the other is to find the distances to about a million galaxies to define the large-scale structure that exists in the universe. Okay, 78% is what I'm seeing on the humidity, so we're still, we're still okay to go. Uh, the focus is coming along just about there. So you find the brightest galaxies in that part of the sky that are going to be your sample of a million. Looks very good. Nice and round, nice and tight. You accurately measure the positions. You send those positions to the University of Washington, where they accurately drill holes in the plate to let the light through from that galaxy. This is essentially a small piece of the overall map that we're making of the universe. This corresponds to an area on the sky about three and a half degrees wide, or roughly six times the diameter of the full moon. At each one of these locations where you see a hole with light shining through it, there is an object, a galaxy, a quasar, an interesting star in our own galaxy. And for each one of these holes, we will insert an optical fiber. The optical fiber guides the light from that and only that object down into our spectrograph, which records an optical spectrum of the object. So you take the light and break it up into the colors. Not just a rainbow, but make precise measurements of each narrow band of color. And when you do that, it tells you the story of the galaxy. The spectra that we take with these plates tells us a lot of information about the galaxies. Most important are their distances. We want that information in order to construct a sort of three-dimensional map of the universe. And really, for the first time, we're beginning to see the large-scale structure of the universe in three dimensions instead of just as a flat plane. And that tells us something about what the conditions must have been like in the early universe to result in that three-dimensional structure. The desire has always been there. Astronomers have always wanted to survey the sky and really get this complete census. And indeed, the old-fashioned way of doing this was with photographic plates. And that had its limitations, the most principal one of which is that photographic film is quite a bit less sensitive than are these uh, modern electronic detectors, which are the same technology that you'll find in a digital camera. And so that's the enabling technology. On any given night, as you watch the imaging information come in from the telescope, you see all manner of objects, galaxies, quasars, and interesting stars displayed on our computer monitors. And it's almost like seeing animals in a zoo in the sense that no two of them are alike, and they each have their own history. So not only have we been able to make comments on the way objects evolve and interact with each other, but then as an assembly, how they relate some information about the universe as a whole. I think what made the Sloan interesting was that the previous surveys 
uh, of 50,000 objects, it wasn't clear we had a fair sample of the universe. It wasn't clear that we uh, had seen all that there was to see. And the Sloan has now proven to be big enough that we know we have a fair sample of the universe, and we were able to more accurately measure its features. The Sloan survey has enabled us to see the universe in fine detail, uncovering everything from the closest and dimmest stars in our own Milky Way to the furthest quasars in the most remote reaches of the cosmos. On one side, we realize how small we are to be this tiny little speck in this enormously vast universe in which distances are measured in billions of light years, a scale that is just unimaginable on the human scale. On the other hand, it's enormously uplifting to realize that we, as humans, can understand all that. We can comprehend it and, by carrying out observations, learn new things to really understand the universe in which we live.